Aloha to the Interverse tribe and welcome to the one within all. Today, dear friends, we welcome back to the show our most frequently recurring guest and a great amigo to many, the one and only Chris Abert. It is interesting timing to be having Chris back here again, as it's been quite some time since he last dropped by for a podcast, but our intentions really align with the last episode where we explored the permaculture lifestyle with Soul Chi. Chris is also a guy who's dedicated a great deal of time to learning, implementing, and sharing techniques for healthy and sustainable food production. And he's got his hands on a few festival productions in the last year with the Solar Eclipse Festival in August that was called Darkening of the Sun, and the festival that we're here to tell you about today, which is coming up on July 27th and 28th in Ava, Missouri, called Lighting of the Moon. It's going to be an awesome place to perk up your creative motivations and have a great time doing it with music, live art, camping, swimming, hiking trails, yoga and other instructional workshops, craft vendors, and a whole bunch of neo-hippie earth lovers who are throwing this event to help launch their sustainable permaculture food gardening community. Chris is also the host of the podcast Dream Nexus, which you can find on YouTube and SoundCloud. Check the episode notes for links to that and... If you tune into a show in the coming weeks, you'll be hearing interviews with some of the artists that will be performing at Lighting of the Moon. So let's all make the mental effort to wish some positive love energy in the direction of our brother Chris and the whole Lighting of the Moon production crew as we welcome him back to the show to hear more about what's going on in Ava this month. Welcome back to the Interverse, dude. I'm really interested in hearing more about Lighting of the Moon. This is a really good opportunity to get some of the positive intentions out there to vibe with the people that might be interested in such a spectacular offering of music and art. Yeah, it's it's something that's really beautiful. I'm super grateful to be a part of it. So this, this lineup, Lighting of the Moon, for anybody that wants to know, is July 27th through 28th. This year, uh, there's going to be a pre-party on July 26th as well, into the, leading into the weekend. The headliners are Grouch, Future Primitive, The Human Experience, Andralian, David Starfire, Spankalicious, Plantray, and it keeps going on, Mindex, of the Trees, Moniker, Psilocybin, Deerskin, Living Light, Lucid, Beard Thug, Louder, did I say that right? Louder, yeah. Uh, Salty, Danny Grooves, Alexis Tucci, Flintwick, Whippy Goldbrick, Plunky, Joe Blush, C- 3KO, Dropcha, Tony, that uh, Tony the Tiger, Sacred Circus, Reconnection Village, and Bonfire Session. So there's also going to be an um, an acoustic set uh, by the the directional poles I was telling you about before. We'll have the Medicine Tribe camp out down there and some live artists playing um, acoustic guitars and drums and different stuff like that. And there'll be workshops down there as well. Flintwick, that's a homie. He is on the lineup. That's worth going to see. <laughs> he, at Backwoods this year, he played the weirdest music I've ever heard. Mm-hmm. I was jumping up and down. I was so excited. I don't even think I had more fun at any other set. And that's just one of the acts that's there that's going to be Mm -hmm. on my radar. So that's exciting, man. Yeah, it's a super sick lineup. I'm I'm stoked. I've been listening to the music and thinking about the different artists to interview and stuff like that, kind of getting prepared. I've been jamming out to the music, dancing while gardening. (laughs) (laughs) It's been a culmination really of like years of work, but has kind of come about in the past three or four months or so. We wanted to have an event that was similar to Darkening in the Sun or carrying some of the same themes and and energy and intention of returning to our tribal roots and, you know, finding how we can work together and heal together and uh, enjoy ourselves. Yeah, so Darkening the Sun was during the eclipse uh, this past September. It was a really amazing event. There was like, I think like about 3,000 people there or so. And there was like a total loop like a full totality of the eclipses. So I was just looking at Jamie Seed's picture up there. Yeah, I have a photograph by the illustrious Jamie Seed here in the studio that he gifted to me of 
the actual moment of the sun disc being covered by the eclipse. It's quite a cool picture. I think it's getting tapestries made up, but go yeah. hit up Jamie's seat for awesome things in general. I recommend it. Yeah, he's a great photographer. Darkening of the sun, though, that was quite an yeah, incredible you're there, event. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that was one of the coolest festivals I've been to in my life. I saw unidentified flying objects there. I witnessed cloud busting in action. Cloud busting is where a group of people focusing their intentions on storms not happening totally dissipate huge clouds and make them dissolve with the power of our collective mind. It's real. I've seen it at other festivals, but never seen it actually so 100% nonstop force field level you know, it was crazy. It was crazy. You saw what I was talking about, right? Huge thunderclouds coming in, and then they would just, like, split in two and go opposite directions. Yeah, it's really crazy. Like, I've seen so many different things like that at music festivals. It's always, like, something about the energy in the space. Just, like, I don't know. Like, there's so much more potential for us to be able to tap into some of those abilities that we that we may very well have. You know, I think it's definitely possible. It's really cool to witness when people do focus their energy and intention and actually just, you know, double rainbows or something. <laughs> I just always assumed that there were so many Native American medicine men mm -hmm. at that Darkening of the Sun Festival that they were doing some weather shamanism or something. <laughs> I was trying to help, though. <laughs> you should look it up, though, guys. Cloud busting, there's real science behind it. There's a measurable effect of clouds dissipating from people uh, paying attention to a certain spot and visualizing it disappearing or just believing it's going to disappear or whatever you got to experiment with it everybody's different when it comes to psi phenomenon but you know all that matter out there is just an extension of your inner psyche so it makes perfect sense that what you focus on and direct attention to energy can flow to and that's definitely a positive type of energy that is flowing all around and swirling at darkening of the sun that was just one of the coolest things I've ever experienced the eclipse itself was really weird. There were actual like chemtrail planes flying and nobody was noticing that yet we're all looking straight up and even right at the moment that the sun, the solar disk came uncovered from the moon, a chemtrail plane just jetted right across it. It was so whack and if you were wearing the sunglasses you literally couldn't see it and not to turn this into a negative thing, but I just think that that's how much energy and it was going on there that they were literally trying to like spray us down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hey, stop that. <laughs> but, but it didn't stop it. So no. Yeah. No. And now we got this next one coming up. Tell me more. That's right. So yeah, dark darkening was an, a really an amazing experience. I did some of the podcasts for the festival itself, interviewed some of the headliners. And that was incredible. It was, you know, one of my first times really doing that in my in my journey as a podcaster. So that was neat. It was really cool. But yeah, so darkening was amazing. And they we had like a, a pre-festival kind of camp out thing. It was called Lighting in the Moon. And everybody kind of got together. It was like, I think, 30 or 40 of us, maybe more. Just gathered around a campfire and shared stories and played music and just, you know, shared each other's shared each other's space. It was beautiful. So we were wanting to have another one of these events and kind of in the same spirit that was those other events were. It also happens to be correlating that there's an eclipse on the other side of the world at the same time. And it's also a full moon. And this is where part of some of the inspiration for the artwork comes in. It's a buck moon. It's when the deer get their new antlers for the year. So some of that artwork was combined and given to some of the different graphic artists that were involved. Josh Gore worked on a painting for it, and then we had another artist in Florida that made the, the graphic for the actual festival itself. Which is really cool looking. Please check the show notes also for links to this festival, because mm -hmm. if you're in the Missouri, Arkansas, or even a state or two away, it's going to be something worth coming to because there's music festivals that are a party and then there's music festivals that are high vibing spiritual transformation experiences that are also a party exactly <laughs> i know that some people actually like are against that even as a concept but i think that we should be coming together and celebrating because what we resonate while we are at a height of emotion and feeling is a stronger resonation so far. Collective intention as a group when we come together is to come away as people that are more responsible, more ready to take on 
what is necessary to transform our individual lives to be a non-parasitic species on Earth, mm-hmm. which is really important. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, I, those intentions are massively amplified. Whether or not you do any particular experience or any part of the festival, whenever you create a space like this, it gives people a second to go, oh, what am I here on Earth for? More likely than, you know, on a regular Saturday. <laughs> That's what I love about this event is the, the intention is to create a safe space, really, for people to be themselves, for one, and to find others, find the others, you know what I mean? People that are inspired to pursue their dreams, inspired to change the world, make it a better place, leave it better than they found it, you know? And there are different organizations connected with it that I've been working with really hard for over a year now to create awesome change in the world. And I think that there's a lot of opportunities for us bioregionally to share resources, to share our knowledge, to share our connections, the people we know and, and what we got to take care of each other. Our abundance and our mutual success is a lot closer than I think a lot of us think. And I think that if we can have events, have just different things to just ground into that intention and that focus, that we can achieve those things. I think we can do anything. We're limitless, multidimensional beings. You know, we're, we're super powerful, and especially when we can gather in a space where we feel safe to be that full expression of what we are. Absolutely. That is exactly the gospel of the festival transformation that I've been speaking of for like a good five years. Because the first time I went to a music festival, that's the that's what happened to me. I, mm-hmm. For the first time, I started going, wait, who do I want to be? Yeah. And it wasn't like, who am I based on what the world has made me, which is what I was up to that point. There was a breaking through moment where I went, wait, I can do whatever I want. Because when you're at some of these events, you can just kind of do whatever you want. I think most people, while they're in those spaces, what is being inspired in them is to reflect on the amazing creativity they're witnessing or how they might even get involved with certain things that are happening. And it definitely a possible rite of passage for somebody. If you're someone that doesn't feel like they found their life's path, I'm not going to guarantee you that you're going to all of a sudden become your superhero version of yourself overnight from going to a music festival but i do encourage you to come out to events like this there's a lot of different ways to get out of your shell and it starts with realizing that the quality of people that we surround ourselves with and their intentions is going to shape and mold who and what we become and that our own nature is entirely mutable and it's not set in stone it's not handed to us from our parents or from our society or from our culture Our nature is what we're becoming in this moment. So (laughs) whenever you can get some people that are more free into your life experience and vibe with them and mix up your vibration with them and energies together, I think that's good for you. Or even if you've got a lot of toxicity or heaviness that you're bringing with you there, there's people there that are not going to judge you for it. They're not going to be weighed down and they're there to just heal together. We're all there to heal together. Yeah, I think, Lisa, I don't think I'm uh, overstating the potential of, of something like this. And it's so synchronistic even to be having on a buck moon because you, my friend, have the appellation of deer heart and have an awesome, crazy deer tattoo on your chest. And this is like probably from what I've known you to be one of the biggest yeah. events that you've ever had a hand in coordinating. So it's, it's pretty cool to, to watch your journey since the last time we've been on here. Damn it, Chris, I'm proud of you. (laughs) Thank you, man. Thank you. It's been quite a journey. Definitely, I've been wanting to get back on your show for a minute, but I I knew that it'd be the right time, like it'd be perfect, like right now, you know? And that's what I find is like now, at this point in my journey, I've just witnessed so much magic that I'm just like in a whole nother world in a way. It's just, it's, it's beautiful. Like, yeah, just like the thing with the name and everything and my tattoo, like I had sent... Josh, one of the pictures like of my tattoo, because me and Eric had talked about it, and like, oh, it's just like lines up, and it, you know, I got my tattoo because it was inspired from an event, from a ceremony that I went there, or from a from an experience I had in a ceremony there. Yeah, and so I sent that to him, and so Josh had created some artwork, um, and then had sent, I believe, his artwork to that artist in Florida, and then he came up with something really quickly, and then I don't think I'm not 100 percent sure, but I don't think the artist in Florida got to see. My tattoo he just told eric just told him kind of like what some of the themes were and he just created this like perfect thing that looked exactly like it 
um, with a lot of the same themes and like even the arrows that are coming out of it and like it's just like what <laughs> what and like and then the, the buck moon and everything it's just very synchronistic <laughs> yeah it sounds like that whole community is just full of magical people it is. Uh, Ava in general Ava Missouri seems like a sleepy little small town but it's a hotbed for the rebellion the heady rebellion against the evil empire <laughs> yeah, right. the peaceful rebellion though the with the realization that the only thing we've ever been at war with was ourselves and our actual true nature which is to be in balance and harmony with the earth and resisting that has caused all these growing pains and here we are coming back to the beginning now as we're entering the future which is you know permaculture and mm -hmm. creating food for us and actually <laughs> eating stuff that didn't come out of a box and you know we're gonna also have this crazy tech while we're at it so there's a brave new world my yeah. friend Absolutely. festivals are the perfect place to fuse those things because you're playing outside but with crazy lasers yeah this festival is like a really great example for me to see this fusion of how we can you know merge these solutions and this beauty that we experience at festivals and in trying to seek truth and live truth you know and, and live our dreams and co-create beautiful things together I think what's really awesome about this community that we're building in Ava, and this is a good time to kind of talk about this as well, is this this festival is also going towards supporting uh, an intentional community that we're building in Ava. We're also working with the city as well. It's a really, really beautiful city, actually. There's a really beautiful and like vibrant culture of its own there that has been there for generations, practicing different forms of sustainability and farming and there's a lot, tons of knowledge and wisdom there to explore and people that, to work together with that are already that already know what's up. And it's great. It's really great to see people that are inspired to make a real difference in their community, to make it a beautiful place and have abundance and share that. So it's great that we have that to work with in the community. And I think that it also serves as a really great example of like how to build a bridge, you know, between these really powerful solutions for advancing society and taking care of our future generations and addressing the issues that we actually face in this and the ones then that we face now, you know, how we, um, what ways can we work with our building our community and, and, you know, storing value and creating value to also help the city with like, you know, repairing their sewers and repairing different things in their infrastructure that need to be fixed. You know, it's not like we got to like, for all these communities that are being built up everywhere it's not like we're going to tear everything down right away you know what i mean or or even for a while like there's nothing wrong with the house you know what i mean some some ways may be inefficient but there's lots of other ways we can we can modify it at least and it's really cool to see how these two things are blending together these two worlds are blending together we're just like finding a way to make it work you know finding out how to be more self-reliant and just eat healthier and be healthier and um, so the, the project that we've we've been working on for a while is uh, so there's where the events gonna be held actually is is our event grounds it's where we have ceremony and stuff it's on a 30 acre plot it's got a chapel it's got a stage and a covered awning area and then just a huge field beautiful uh, the beautiful Bryant River that flows through the back of it it's got a sandy beach and and uh, we also have our directional poles for where we had a Lakota ceremony, a road peyote road band came in and did Lakota ceremony. And then another space in the back where we have our regular ceremonies. Beautiful grounds. I spent a lot of time out there for the past couple of years. Just the, the, the space in and of itself is so magical. It's like the land has so much medicine. It's like from just like years of ceremonies being held there and just the amount of prayer and intention and um, healing that's taken place that the, the the land has an aura of its own that's very transformative and so when i've experienced events there as well it seems like it's just like it just amplifies that yeah i think that it's one of those places that when you're there you can just feel the ancestors that were moving mm -hmm. through that place too because human beings pick the same spot to hang out because we're all human from generation to generation oh there's this nice little sandy beach by where this creek goes through here and lots of shade trees and no predators let's hang out here <laughs> yeah you know and it does have a strong vibe of the spirit of healing mm -hmm. in that space as well i the people that i've known to participate in the ceremonies there 
have all been some of the most attentive and kind, mm -hmm. patient people I've ever talked to. Incredible to see how many transformations have happened in people that were already what I consider to be healthy, sane people going from being healthy, sane people in still like working in the matrix in a way and trying to figure out a way out to being people that are now creating this alternative type of community that actually has the potential to be a literal safe zone as the crisis that we're going through right now deepens. And I'm talking about just the food crisis, I'm not talking about the consciousness crisis or the, you know, the dialectical crisis. There's a lot going on, but the main crisis is actually the food crisis in a way because people think, and this isn't like a, a people think and I'm judging them. It's just literally, this is the fact people think that fast food is food and they think that the majority of the options that they're regularly going towards are actually nourishment when at best, even if there is vegetables there, GMO has depleted the nutrients. Soil depletion in general has annihilated a lot of the natural nutrients in the food and pesticides and chemicals render it so poisonous that you're better off not eating most of the stuff that's served at any establishment. Mm -hmm. And that is a super huge crisis. And then no one, no one wants to hear about the crises that are the worst and the most obvious, mm -hmm. you know, no one wants to hear about the reality of how many people are trafficked in sex slavery around the world every day. If everyone, if we had a sane civilization, we put everything on hold until that was completely eradicated from every corner of the earth. And then we would go, okay, now what? But, and then the next thing we would say is, oh, the food is really bad. We should figure out how to have permaculture, sustainably grown food and re-educate the population to understand what modern science has come to prove about what ancient people have always known about how to eat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it, it, I see it as a huge crisis because there's parts of the world, part, parts of urban areas that feel like the, the inhabitants feel like they're in a developed area that's cutting edge and modern. And they're in a literal food desert where you couldn't even find a supermarket with organic vegetables for three miles. And that's three miles through city traffic or whatever. So it's, it is a crisis. It's absolute crisis. And the bridge building is an important aspect that I wanted to go back and touch on because the music festival world, the music and art world, these, these creative freedom loving, neo hippies as i affectionately call them they all want this change for the most part you know anyone that's part of that culture even if the most party animal and not very responsible person in their heart of hearts wants the change that you and i are talking about even if they are eating the egg mcmuffins in the morning and they know they know that there's something more for them in life we all know it, but you know, this community is full of young people that really know that and are hungry for something different. And that's why they're spending their last dollar on their 750 an hour job to buy a ticket to backwoods music festival or whatever, because they want something different. And it's like so desperate. And so it's really important that we build the bridge that you're talking about. And hopefully I can build through this podcast between that community and communities like you and like Solchi, who I talked to last week with Interwoven Permaculture Farm and start to show that there's places to go already. There's safe zones to go already. You called it that a safe space, but not like a politically correct safe space. It's the furthest thing from that. It's the truth safe space. Mm -hmm. And one of the most important things I've ever come to understand about the nature of this mere reality is that safety is a state of mind but it's also, it's required that you have a level of personal responsibility to actually be safe as well. You have literally, you're responsible for your own safety. But if you have a community that's all watching out for each other, then you can start no longer worrying about where your food's coming from, even if you didn't grow it directly, because you know everyone around you and you trust them all. And it's not about going into a tribe and splintering it's about 
bringing all these tribes together and turning the corpse of this dying civilization beast into a butterfly body mm-hmm. out of the debris. That's beautifully said. I think what we're doing is like building a bridge back to nature and the abundance that already lies within it and that symbiotic relationship with us because we are it. The way that we're farming right now is destroying the environment. There's no, there's no getting away from that. And there's so many different practices that we can adopt that can heal that and can grow abundantly as well. There's, there's so much more room even for more people on this planet. It, it never made sense to me, the argument of over, overpopulation. It doesn't make any logical sense to me because all that means is just we're just not getting our act together because there's more, more than enough. And if we really distributed all the wealth in the world, everybody would be billionaires. If it was fairly distributed, yeah. Like, so then what are we, you know? And I think that's what's really interesting about cryptocurrency is because it's actually leveling the playing field in a lot of ways for different people to, to tap into that abundance mutually um, and create, you know, networks of value exchange. And I think that's really important to, to have a network like that, especially if we're trying to um, approach a region like bioregionally approaching an environment, you know, like the, like the Ozark region. There's all kinds of different specific environmental stresses it faces from the different types of farming, the monocropping, the chemicals that are polluting the rivers and streams and everything, um, how it affects the, the micronutrients and the, the bacteria and all of that. It's, we live in a huge biome and that we also need those things in our bodies as well. We need those minerals. We need all the stuff that if the plants aren't able to break it down properly, we're just not getting it. And then we're all running around nutrient deficient <laughs> and wondering why we have so many problems, really. But there's so much of it does come down to just damage to the body from lack of proper nutrition and energy from our food. Well, to, I'd like to touch on the nutrition thing maybe later if we go that far Mm -hmm. but what is really interesting to me is the crypto aspect that you just brought up because with crypto what you're talking about is value exchanging a currency that is value whereas with what we use dollar bills as our debt dollar bills Mm -hmm. equals debt so that's a debt exchange system and you're literally when you give someone dollar you're in a way you're saying that person is now responsible for this one dollar's worth of debt. It's mm. creating your own value in things. I think is super important. Creating things with value, creating them for yourself, exchanging those things, real food as something that's valuable. <laughs> mm-hmm. It makes so much sense that you could easily form your own currency and get outside of all of these things that are connecting us karmically to stuff we don't want. Spending dollar bills that tax their way into being bombs later down mm-hmm. the line that we never even find out yeah. how that's used <laughs> just because the money's rolling through our fingers but as terence yeah. mckinnis says we want to create culture not consume it to go into the nutrition thing that you're just bringing up we're all so ridden with parasites yeah, we got to create a, a good healthy culture to have a good culture <laughs> and the, yeah and, and the candida bacteria that's inside of us a lot of the people that are old, older and overweight and can't even figure out how to lose weight, even though they're eating better and they just feel like crap, it's a lot of that bulk is not actually fat. It's bacterial colonies that are so overgrown mm-hmm. and overfed that they're becoming massive. And they've lied to us about this fat thing for a long time, actually. And what's really happening is people are bloating up on parasitic bacteria, literal, actual parasites and bugs and worms and things. And there's ways to create your own culture in a literal sense that can help change our state of consciousness into one that is a more creative and less consuming one. Uh, One of the things I just heard about actually was this crazy cabbage juice that you can make, fermenting cabbage juice with just sea salt and make a probiotic drink that's literally immeasurable with bacteria can't even count it and drink that and chase it with water i'm going to get more info and tell you guys about that later but just like i wanted to bring it up as an example because we're talking about being culture creators not consumers well what we need is cleansing tonics literally like what i'm describing of massive amounts of culture that's positive that we created ourselves that goes back inside of ourselves 
to flush out all of the parasites and the bad stuff. It's a it's a metaphor for the entire fractal. It's a great <laughs> metaphor. <laughs> yeah, and that's yeah, that's beautiful. That it's it's what we're trying to do is really just create a foundation to support that, like a container for the culture. You know what yeah. I mean? So just let it grow and flourish on its own, and and we'll have all kinds of workshops at the festival, different people speaking uh, that from our organization about our projects and our cryptocurrency. And, you know, we, so another part of this community is we have 400 acres of land that we're looking to develop. And we have a few different cryptocurrencies that we're launching of our own platform. And where you need some of the funding from that to create the infrastructure and build up the community, we'll have greenhouses for farming with, you know, outfitted with aquaponics and uh, all kinds of cool stuff, uh, permaculture, horticulture, or hooviculture, um, and, and food forests and stuff like that. We wanted to make a lot of the living space also a lot, just have growing space as much as we can, you know, and build landscaping and everything. And multiple different forms of building styles from earth bags to domes to almost like cabin-like structures, you know what I mean, log cabins and stuff. A huge variety of different things, earth ships, you know, we're really open to a lot of different techniques. And a lot of this is really to create um, the best model that we can because we have big plans to expand these communities, you know, far and wide and kind of fractalize it and continue with more music festivals and more events and continue to expand the cryptocurrency and farming and, and just spread goodness, you know, as much as we can. And the words of Rage Against the Machine, take the power back. <laughs> that is what it is this is an energy game overall everything is energy and what parasites do whether they're cultural parasites that try to control and manipulate you with energy with media or they're the bacteria parasites inside of us that control and direct our cravings and a lot of our thoughts and desires and i mean they really do like what you, you don't even know what food actually tastes like mm -hmm. And neither do I, because I have not got all the parasites out of my body and the bacteria that actually change. You have neurons in your gut, in your stomach, brain cells, and they are getting influence. And like I said, we don't even know what food actually tastes like until we get all that stuff out of us. <laughs> and not to keep harping on that point, but the reason I bring up the gut bacteria again and the media as a form of weaponized negative parasitic culture is that it's all an energy game and your attention is your main form of energy and spiritual currency in a sense it's what what you spend your time on they say time is money they don't that's actually all in a way very real and true and whatever time that we can each start putting an attention we can start putting towards these solution oriented ideas or even things that we could practice, whether it's working on a garden in your own backyard or looking for an intentional community that's near you and seeing if you can go learn there or something. There's people near you that are doing this, but it requires the attentiveness and the willingness to look and to spend your energy of attention on something that you're choosing, which is another form of creation, even, even simple as it may seem just the very act to choose to do something for yourself as opposed to doing it because it's what's expected of you or you don't you can't think of anything better to do so we might as well watch hey arnold <laughs> but choosing it for yourself is a form of creation so you know that's what we're hoping to inspire i think with chris's festival with this podcast about it and i'll kick it over to you to wrap us up that's what I really aim and like hope to do with, with all of these efforts, this, this show, with, with all what we're doing is just to inspire people to, to, to be themselves, to, to be fully human, and to um, just come together and, and create, not even create, just to just recognize the heaven that's already here and that we can share it together. And that it's through having events like these growing food, just spending this time together and like talking about things on a real level that we can get that much closer to finding a solution. And I think that 
through it's like is this it is a war you know what i mean it is a war on consciousness all this is, is it's it's real since since the first episode we did together it hasn't become any less real for me you know and like i wake up to knowing that my people are dying every day you know but we're also thriving at the same time and i think that if we continue the direction we're going we're just going to heal everything with abundance and unconditional love like that the what else are we going to do <laughs> You know what I mean? I think that that's that's what's coming, and that's what's already happening. That's what's happened, and that's that's something I've been witnessing um, every day since moving down to Ava and being a part of the, the food forest there. One of the three acres that we got in town is like like I'm just taking it from my own experience of everything I've gone through in the past years of this calling to this place and this this uh, higher aspect of my being and just my highest potential. You know, I just always felt it. And I knew that, like, since my first time ever coming down, really, like, something was just calling me to be there. Didn't know quite what it was. And it, it took me a while, but the past three weeks that I've been here, I've recognized the feeling that I feel now is the feeling that I've been chasing for, like, ever. <laughs> and it it's like this satisfaction of uh, a certain level of awareness of my being and my capacities and being able to be and flow and create and, like, to be in a space that's so magical where like we can speak things and very quickly they manifest very quickly. I even think it and like just the things that we need to like get the grass cut and just do different stuff there. It literally just flows and it can just stay in this flow all day and just to be in that magic all the time to not feel like I'm so much a part of this, the whole Babylonian system and everything, but to be like in the dream, you know, it's really magical. And I'm beyond grateful for that. And I found that that's, that was actually one of my last intentions. That, that was my intention at my last ceremony was to try to stay in this constant flow of gratitude with the universe, to, to love my reality, to love myself and everything around me so much that it, it's just that much more likely to want to actually cooperate. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then because when you experience things that take you out of that flow, it takes you to like realize, oh wait, maybe it is something that I need to recognize, learn from, grow, adapt to that. But like, then you can be thankful for that. Thank you for the lesson. It's like, okay, you just keep staying in that and it doesn't really seem to hurt you so much. And things that you really need to get done, get done. And things that you hope for, expected for, things end up happening that are beyond your expectations and even more beautiful than that. And that's part of, um, I guess we'll I'll be able to share that, I guess, before the episode's over, is the story of the deer heart. Is, this was back over a year ago at a ceremony, at a peyote ceremony <clears throat> at New Haven. We had a sweat lodge, that ceremony. And I was in the sweat, and uh, Grandma Linda was singing songs for the sweat, and she uh, she started singing her deer song, which I, I later got a CD of it, and she was talking in there about how it's one of her favorite songs to play and that it's like, uh, it's really, it's a song about unconditional love and acceptance and, and just working together. When Shiver, she was playing, she started playing. I had this vision of a deer spirit that came out of a, a spiral, just like just emerged in front of me and had all this, this light and geometry and sacred geometry and everything. And it was communicating to me about words, just in spirits telepathically and, it was like, you know, are you ready to, like, here it is. Are you ready to accept this higher aspect of your nature and, like, of your own creativity and, you know, ability to create? Like, are you ready to step into this? And I was like, yeah. <laughs> and it I felt like it jumped into me and, like, it, um, it opened so many aspects of my ability to heal myself and others and, um, and be connected with my ancestors and nature. It's just an aspect of my character that I couldn't forget. And I, uh, it just, it meant so much to me, like that experience, like it was a sat for, for like a couple of weeks. I don't know what it was. And then it's just like one day a name just came to me and just like popped in my head. It felt like just like straight from spirit. It's like, Dear heart, it's your name. And part of it's like a lot of like my archetype of just kind of what I feel like I am, like, um, Another part that came to me was like, you know, who's planted and antlers lifted, like I'm grounded and I'm here and I'm looking out and I'm looking up, you know, I'm like trying to, to protect, 
and also be graceful in in the way that I just go about my actions, you know. And and there was a another experience there where I, I had uh, at a ceremony where there was a, actually a, a deer a deer carcass that I found in the field and I touched it and it felt like it imparted a part of its consciousness to me and just gave the message to like of like its feeling and how it felt to be and like how it was just so grateful to be alive and it loved the land so much that that's how it was always provided for staying in that flow of gratitude that it was just always connected that it had to worry for nothing and then when it was really time to go it's just time to go and it was like, that's how much you have to love. It's how much you have to love your people. It's how much you have to love yourself and your connection with spirit. And just the, the, the level of gratitude that I have for the immense amount of lessons I've learned in that space and just to witness others as well. And they're the, some of the most deepest, profoundest parts of their journeys. I've just witnessed right there. And I was like, oh, I get to see that. You know, I get to participate in that or one of us gets to be the one that says something that inspires us so much to actually go forward with that aspect of our dream or get over that aspect of our fear or just move on with other aspects of our lives. And that's just the theme that does not stop there. And it even blends into the events and things like that. It's just, it's an aura that's about that place. And it even, I feel like it's there at the, the three acre property I'm at too. It's just like this magic of just, us being <laughs> and uh, not being so disillusioned anymore and not pretending so much anymore and that everything's just okay, you know, when it's not, <laughs> when there's a balance that is upset and that needs to be restored and it's just nature, it's what we are and it's beautiful, it's perfect and it's abundance and it's nothing to be afraid of. I think that is the perfect thing to focus on is that the fear, the fear of a loss of personal power, the fear of death, of course, there's so many fears. We've got all of these things that are the real blocks to love mm -hmm. to the point where a lot of us can't even look each other in the eye mm -hmm. because we just have, we call it my anxiety or we call it my social awkwardness or whatever. We give things labels, we put them in a box, and then we say, I know about that, it's done now. As opposed to really getting behind why we're behaving in ways that disconnect us. We gotta stop being, I feel like I'm gonna just say it again, we gotta stop being shaped by the culture and start creating our own culture. And that starts, literally the only way that can be done is with how you live your life, how we live our lives. And it's really inspiring to hear just a fraction of some of what I'm sure you could tell us about and what's happened in the last year. And we'll talk again soon on yeah. my people. This was just a thing out of the sheer necessity of us being in the same building that we yeah. had to record something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Actually, but we really wanted to get this lighting of the moon festival properly talked about on the airwaves because this is something that if you don't go to any music festivals this year, this would be a good one to do. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, so come see the land, come see the, what's in the works with this intentional community. Come learn about cryptocurrency. If you're into that, then you'll be, if you like Bitcoin and you've got your portfolio and all that stuff, <laughs> whatever, how that, how that works. I've got some steam though. I know some things about your quality keys and how actual, even it's called equality keys. We didn't even say that, but they've got actual businesses in the community that are working with the coin to help launch it. And like I said before, it's real value, not debt based value. And I'm sorry for how zigzaggy this is <laughs> um, as a host. This is, I'm not in my prime time <laughs> mental acuity wise. I keep making that excuse, but <laughs> I know you guys don't care. Thanks anyway. All right, Chris. No need to apologize. Yeah, right. Uh, beautiful. Yeah, all I should do is just say <laughs> thanks instead of apologize. I've been trying to practice that one. There was a, there was a guy I met, uh, this guy Dolphin, that came by the past couple weeks, and um, whenever somebody would say they were sorry, he'd be like, "No, like repeat after me. I'm not sorry. I'm beautiful." And then 
other people in the group would say, we are beautiful. Yes, we are. Just every time, just catch us, we just, we do that. We apologize for ourselves constantly for things we don't need to apologize for. And like diminish ourselves because of speech, slight speech infractions or different. <laughs> it's negative culture. Right, exactly. Literally, it's, it's a cultural uh, trait of us. I used to go around, I should do this again. For some reason, I stopped because no one told me to stop, but I got self-conscious, like we're talking mm -hmm. about. I used to go around saying, don't be sorry, be yourself, when someone would say sorry. But then I'd turn around and say sorry about something, so that's probably why I quit. I couldn't practice what I preached. <laughs> sorry on myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, Chris, uh, it's been awesome having you on here, and I do wish we could talk a little longer, but let's just make sure to do it sooner. The festival is July 27th through 28th, and there is a pre-party uh, pre on the 26th. Sweet. Thanks for coming over, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, we'll talk to y'all later. Awesome. Thanks for having me. Love you, dude. Well, guys, that about sums it up, right? Pragmatic permaculture, mystical deer visions and ceremonies. We've got a full moon festival. This was a pretty cool episode. I'd even think it was cooler if I see some of you guys out there at the event next month. But if not, feel free to cheer us on as we seek to come together and build better selves and a better place to live for these guys who are wanting to do something intentional with their lives and create something healthy with their time. I appreciate that a lot. I'm glad someone's out there building permaculture communities because I'm not directly involved with that kind of thing despite knowing how right that actually is. But we each have our own paths and our own roles to play. Mine seems to be talking into a microphone to you guys on the internet, and I'm grateful for that role. It's actually the one that I chose for myself and it's the one that I like. Chris is also pretty good at doing that kind of thing. I encourage you to check out Dream Nexus podcast. There's even an episode, the very first one with me from a while back. Who knows, I don't stand by anything I said any time except for right now, so. <laughs> no, I'm sure it's a pretty cool episode. Speaking of cool stuff, I'll tell you the story real quick about seeing UFOs at the Darkening of the Sun Festival. Not your traditional UFOs, didn't look like metallic craft or flying saucers. Actually what happened was, I was sitting with a couple of friends under our pop-up at our camp, and all of a sudden this weird looking white orb came out of the ground, it was about the size of a beach ball from behind the vehicle that was next to us. And I got up and I was like, what the hell is that? And I walked towards it and it kind of zipped away really fast. It barely looked like it moved. It practically just like lasered from one spot to another way up into the sky where there were three more of these things all flying around and they would seem to merge and then split apart. And after watching this for like 20 or 30 seconds, they zipped away to the tree line and vanished behind the horizon in a really rapid motion. It was very strange. I don't know what to make of it exactly, but I have heard of other reports of similar sounding objects. You tell me. So check the show notes for links to the festival or Chris's podcast and Flintwick, which is the music I put into this episode. You can also find a link to patreon.com forward slash interverse where you will be able to subscribe to the podcast to get early access and increased episode length when possible. Unfortunately, I'll be honest with you, this one is not an extended episode. So I apologize to the plus members, but I can't do it every time. This was a very impromptu recording as it turns out. And I'm glad we did get to put it together, but Chris is just a super busy guy trying to get this festival thing put together and we had to do what we had to do and we couldn't go for more than the hour or so this episode is and that's just that. I had to make my peace with it. I know you guys will be easy on me. Thanks for tuning in. And keep your eyes peeled for some episodes in the future that I'm very excited to be getting to record. The next episode is actually going to be episode 100 of the podcast. 
I know I've been numbering them season 4, 16, 17, etc. But the next one is the 100th one in sequence. And that's kind of exciting to me. I've been on this journey for a couple of years now. And to have produced that many shows, that many hours of audio is kind of crazy to think about if you put all that side by side. And hopefully something is showing for it. I know that I get a lot of great interactions with you listeners whenever they do come about and I appreciate each and every one of you who is checking it out for the first time or who's been a loyal subscriber or is an awesome Patreon subscriber. But in a couple weeks, you'll be seeing the podcast episode 100 with Michael Garfield, a futurist, paleontologist, psychedelic artist, author, podcaster. You can check out his show at Future Fossils and I do recommend you check that out before we get into that episode because... He is an incredibly intelligent guy with some very far out ways of looking at this fractal that we call the universe. Things that I am very excited to discuss with him and pick his brain on and see where he stands on. And I hope that you guys get excited too. If you know who Michael Garfield is, you probably already are. And if not, go check that out for sure. I'll link to that in the show notes as well. And that's it for my ramble. It's Father's Day here and as much as I hate the corporate necessity of these type of holidays and I already see my dad quite a bit I think I had to go pay a visit because I do care for him and he's a pretty good dad so no matter your experience with your family your father etc just remember you don't have to be the conduit or the receptacle for any kind of negative energy and by focusing on what you love and what makes you feel good whenever you're interacting with anybody or when you're by yourself well, you're going to feel better. It just makes sense. So don't have to be right. You don't have to argue. You don't have to correct. Family members are often impossible to get through to in those ways. Anyway, let's all try to work on just cultivating loving kindness when we're in each other's presence. That's the creative culture that we can, that's what we can do. Instead of being slaves to the negative culture that we feel is being foisted upon us that's outside of our control, that's other people's behavior. Let's create that positive culture from within by just practicing that mindful, loving attention and giving others room to be who they are, but also not (laughs) exacerbating their problems by, oh, poor you and all that, because I don't think that works. I'm trying to get away from that myself. So let's let's all have a great time and remember everything's all good. That's what I'm here to tell you. Okay. Ramble over. Chance out. Love you all. Bye.